Today I'm going to show you how to use the vector sum function to analyze vibration data. Here I have some vibration data versus RPM and I can see that third order is pretty big. This uh, vibration data, it actually consists of several channels. I have an accelerometer in the X direction, accelerometer in the Y direction, accelerometer in the Z direction. You can see that depending on where we are in the run-up, that sometimes the vibration is dominated by either the X, Y, or Z. The vector sum will let me put all these together. I'm going to put it in the input basket. Go to time data selection here and hit replace so that it's available for processing. And I got all three channels plus the RPM here. And then I'll go to time data processing. I want to define third order since that's a pretty important uh, order. And I'm going to analyze that from 1000 to 3500 RPM in steps of 10. And the vector sum, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to find the tab called the derived FS under channel processing settings. Highlight the first cell here, hit the FX, and I can select vector sum out of the list. And I can say, hey, I want to analyze these channels that are on this triaxial accelerometer. If I'm not sure what the channel numbers are, I got a pull down list up here. See, I got channel one here. I got channel two. And then if I hit new function, I can add the third channel, channel three, hit OK. And this is going to be the vector sum of vibration from this triax. So I'll say vector sum. I'll hit close. I'll hit calculate. And if I go into the navigator, I can check out what I just processed here. Under sections, I can see the orders. And if I look at these orders, I can see I got all three individual directions and then I have the vector sum which should be the magnitude of all three of these directions so it should be larger than all three and it encapsulates the vibration of the entire run-up including the fact that at a certain RPM the X direction dominates at higher RPMs the Z direction dominates maybe one thing to point out about this when we're defining these channels you know, there's also a channel name. Instead of channel 1, I could say Excel X. So I can use the actual name rather than the channel number. And then that is a valid formula. If I had the wrong name here and I hit OK, it would turn red saying it's not the right name. This gives me some flexibility depending how good I am. Um, maybe we always on our testing campaigns use a consistent name naming convention and if that's the case then I can save away actually formula sets with that name in there and then no matter what channel the tracks is put on it'll always find it so if I had seat track vibration steering wheel vibration something like that I could have the appropriate names already defined and the vector sums done automatically based on the name regardless of the channel they're on Hopefully that helps explain a little bit about uh, derived channels and the vector sum functionality in SimCenter Test Lab.